in the hell do y'all deal with us trauma filled men? And, and and how do sisters create a safe space for us to be vulnerable? Ooh, you want to go first on that one? <laughs> I'm gonna let you talk first. <laughs> um, well, what I what I had learned because before I was like, get yourself together. Whatever it is, go fix it. Come back when you got it all together. We can build together, et cetera, et cetera. And then once I started to look at what love really is, like the definition of love for me, and love is the desire to understand, Mm. right? And so that's going back to some Buddhist principles. And um, if you are going in, into your conversations, into your questioning, with the desire to understand, then I think you're, you are creating a space for that black man to be able to really open up to you. But if you're going in with your own brief, predetermined notions, you know, what you're trying to get out of the conversation, what you want him to say or do or fix, you know, I find that that, that was harder to, to be able to make that connection with him. So my driving point is go in with the desire to understand. If you say you love him. Mm-hmm. If you're loving. What about you, Taraji? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just understanding. You have to understand, and it's not about um, winning. It's about an understanding. about Because love really, like, when you compare, this is what I knew I grew up, because when you can compare your relationship, like, with my girlfriends, like, I don't freak out if they don't call me right back. Because I love them, and I know they love me, and I know it's solid what we got. Mm-hmm. But the problem becomes if you don't have that foundation in the beginning. Mm. So I'm okay with, but first of all, no one's perfect because that's the person. My therapist freed me when she was like, the perfect lie is perfection. Mm -hmm. That's That's the perfect lie. And she, and so, and through my therapy and tapping into my trauma, it's like a lot of times it's um, a misunderstanding. So if you go into it knowing that no one is perfect with uh, with an understanding of trying to build a foundation of trust where we can both be our vulnerable selves, where we don't have to send a representative because I trust if I fall, you're going to catch me. Mm-hmm. Those are things you build, but you can only build them if you know, if you have, or if you are actively dealing with your trauma. And, and a lot of times it's difficult and I'm dedicated to the black man, y'all. I just turned 50 and... Wow. You know, and I haven't said it yet, but it didn't work out. You know what I mean? And mm. and I tried. I was like, therapy, let's do the therapy thing. But if you're both not on the same page with that, then you feel like you're taking it on yourself. And mm. that's not a fair position for anybody to play in a relationship. My my happiness is not his responsibility, and his happiness is, is, is not mine. We have to first learn how to make ourselves happy, to make each other happy. And so when one person is taking on the weight of the entire relationship, it's never going to work. So not, you have to show up, and yes, you want to be understanding, but you can't lose yourself in that understanding. You, you have to still stand up for yourself. And be there for yourself. But it's hard to do if the other person isn't doing that part either. 2020 continues to be the year of purging, as you can see. Taraji said several things. She said she was not secure in the relationship. There was a lack of trust and that they were not on the same page. She also said that neither one's happiness is dependent on the other and he basically did not want to fix the relationship. Here we have a woman who is a mother, a business owner, Oscar-nominated, Golden Globe-winning actress, who wanted to be with this man and work on the relationship, but he clearly didn't see her as the prize in the relationship. Taraji made the mistake that a lot of women make. She picked up this now 37-year-old man, who at the time was younger, to her now 50. This man is reportedly worth between $100,000 to a million dollars, and there are other reports that it may be more. Taraji, on the other hand, is worth a reported $16 million. Kelvin Hayden has two children, and he is a former football athlete 
whose profession is now listed as something to do with fitness. And one would think that he would treat Taraji as the princess in the relationship, but as expected, there are accusations that right before she went public about their relationship, he was seeing two other women and one was a year-long relationship. Taraji was engaged to this man for over two years, and within that time frame, he didn't see her value enough to work on the relationship, and that is the sad part of it all. I mean, what do you expect from a man that's 14 years younger, who I'm sure is not even close to settling down? When I saw on her page where she posted these over-the-top photos, almost naked, I knew that the relationship was over. My question is, why is it that when we are in a relationship with these men, we shape shift to be who they want? The guests they had on the show said that love is coming into an understanding and yet the women are always the ones making concessions and still end up holding the empty bag. I know there is nothing at all wrong with being single and having a man is no validation as a woman. However, when you put what seems to be hard work into a relationship and you turn out to be the only one doing the work, what do you do? Continue on with the relationship that your partner shows you that they don't want to be in? In her case, she walked away and she did so even at 50 years old. And while I suspect that was a hard decision for her because of society's continued trope about black women being single and their constant blame of them being the reason for being single, she finally saw herself as the prize and what she's worth and not the $16 million. But a mother, a business owner, Oscar-nominated Golden Globe winning actress and an icon in, to some in the community. I respect her decision, and I'm sure you do too. Let's hope she kept that ring, no matter what Wendy Williams says. These are just my thoughts. Comment below your thoughts and opinions. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Like, share, and turn on your notification bell so you will know when I upload. And stay tuned for more, and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.